This is an introduction to signals and systems, and this is part one of this lecture. Uh, my name is Dr. Clyde Letzum, and in this uh, presentation, what we will do is we will take a look at uh, what a black box is, talk about signals and systems, then get into continuous time signals and systems, discrete time signals and systems, analog to digital conversion, talk about Nyquist rate, and then finally, we'll get to symmetric signals and anti-symmetric signals. So let's start off first with what exactly is a black box. Now, we've had a discussion on black box systems before in previous classes. But I figured it was a good idea to just remind you or refresh your uh, memory as to what exactly a uh, black box uh, system or black box is. Okay, So a black box uh, in electronics is a circuit that takes in some input, we can say that input, we represent it with the letter X, process that input with some function and provide an output Y. Now, why do we call it a black box? Well, we call it a black box for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first reason is this. We do not care. If we're not working on that actual portion, that actual circuit, we do not care about the actual composition of that circuit. What we care about is that that circuit acts in a, in a uh, predictable fashion, if you will. It, it has a, a specific function and it performs that actual function. Okay. The second reason why we call it a black box is because we say that for any given input that we send into the black box, we expect some output that corresponds to that input being processed by that function. Okay, so it's an expected output given the input that we send in and that function actually working together to give us an expected output. Okay, all right, so let me give you an example of that. Suppose we have a function. Uh, and that function, uh, in this case, a black box function, is a low-pass filter, all right? Let's say the one uh, shown here. So in the case like this, if we send in some full input inf information and we send it to that low-pass uh, filter, we expect that the output would be the full information minus any high frequencies, therefore only leaving us with the low-frequency input or the, well, the low frequency input, that's correct, okay? So that is to say then that this black box, we expect it to act like a low pass filter. We don't care how many capacitors or inductors or resistors they have inside. We are just expected to act like a low pass filter, okay? And we're gonna input some input into it and we expect some output and the output is, we expect the output to be minus or the, the output to be the input minus any of the frequencies. So that's the idea, again, behind a black box, okay? Okay, now that we have that uh, set aside or, or, or understood, how do we actually now take that black box co concept and move it over to signals and systems? Well, the black box itself, we can say that that is the actual system, okay? That is a system. And we may say that the inputs and outputs to and from that system, that black box, we can say, we can call those signals. Okay, so the inputs and outputs to and from that system, we can call those uh, signals. Now, here's the interesting thing. Those signals themselves are functions. And those functions are dependent on one or more variables, such as time, amplitude, and or delay okay so because those signals themselves are functions all right we we will actually write them when we express them mathematically we express them as functions now before we actually get to that though there's two types of functions that exist okay we have a continuous time function or a continuous time signal pardon me and we have a uh, discrete time signal okay for the continuous time signals and those are actually uh, related to analog signals okay we represent those inputs and outputs the inputs as x of t and we represent the output of as y of t 
for a continuous time signal. And again, that is related to analog signals. All right, and we'll talk about exactly what analog signals are. Okay, for discrete time signals, those are related to more closely to digital type signals. Okay, and we represent the input to the uh, function for that, that digital signal as x of n, and we use y of n as the output. Okay, so now let's talk about that continuous time signal uh, that we previously uh, talked about. We'll get more into the details. For a continuous time signal, okay, what happens is this. What exactly is a continuous time signal? Well, with a continuous time signal, all possible times are represented, okay, over some uh, range of time. So let's say if we go from time t equals 0 to time t equals 5, every possible time in between there is represented, whether it be 0.01 seconds, 0.02 seconds, so on and so forth. Every time in there is represented. And for each of those times, okay, there's a value associated with that. And there's an infinite number of values that can be associated with uh, those times that we've uh, previously talked about, okay? Now, those values of, 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 um, that are associated with those times can, for instance, if we're talking about voltage, they can be uh, zero volts. They can be 0 0.11111 volts, or they can be 0 0.11111 volts, so on and so forth, okay? So therefore, you can see why we say that there's an infinite number of possible values there uh, that can be associated with that continuous time. So that's why we call it a continuous time signal. For all times, there's a value in between whatever our range is, okay? For all possible times. And along with those all possible times, there's a value associated with each one of those times. And we can have an infinite number of values for that. So if we have that um, system, okay, as we mentioned before, so this is our system here represented by the function or this funny looking f, okay, we can say then that that input to that system is x of t, the output from that system is y of t, okay? Now, if we have a discrete time signal, okay, for discrete time signal, we have a finite number of values, okay? So we don't have an infinite number of values, we have a finite number of values. And for those finite number of values, what happens is we only have defined values for discrete units of time, okay? So for instance, we may only have values for one second, two second, three second, four second, but we may not have values for the times in between those seconds. It's all according to the system that we're dealing with, okay? Or the signal that we're dealing with also, okay? So for instance, a, in a discrete um, signal or discrete system, what would happen is we'd have a discrete signal that's heading in, we'll call that x of n here, and that goes into this system here, and then we have an output represented by y sub n, okay? So that's our discrete uh, time signals and systems that we're talking about on this slide. Okay, so now how do we actually convert between the two or relate the two together? Well, let's say, for instance, we have this, uh, we have this diagram here. And in this diagram, what you'll notice is that we have a sine wave. And that sine wave goes all the way through here, uh, one period, okay? Okay, one cycle. Let's use the term cycle for now. It goes through one cycle, all right? And as you can imagine here, there's a value for each and every specific time here, and it looks like there's an infinite number of values that can be represented or that are within this area here between negative one and one, okay? So the actual sine wave with the line that's going along here, this is an analog signal. Now, with a digital signal, Okay, so if we want to turn that analog signal into a digital signal, what happens is we need to do a couple of things. We, because remember, it's an infinite number of, of uh, values and a discrete, at discrete times. Okay, 
So in order to do the analog digital conversion, we actually need to do a couple of things. We need to do a sampling of the information that's coming in, and in this case, the analog signal that's coming in. We need to do a, a sampling of that. And what do we mean by sampling? What we mean by sampling is this. We speak, uh, pick specific instances in time, and typically those specific instances in time are actually related to each other, each other based off of a sampling period. So in other words, if I sample here at zero, and then I sample at one time period after that, that would be here, two time periods after that, three time periods after that, so on and so forth, that's how they're actually related to each other. They, they, so we're sampling at here, 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 which would be, again, zero time period, one time period, a sampling time period, two sample time, pre time period, three sample time period, so on and so forth, okay? So that, that's what we mean by sampling. We're sampling, we're taking that, that, uh, that signal, okay? And we're, we're actually using some period at which we're actually gonna go through and check what the value of this analog signal is at that point. So in that case, uh, we talk about sampling period T sub S is our sampling period, okay, and we measure that in seconds. S of n here just means the signal, and so it's a discrete signal, and that discrete signal uh, where n is the value of time, we can also say is equal to uh, n times the sampling period, okay, which I kind of alluded to as I was explaining this. Uh, we also have the sampling frequency, and that sampling frequency, which is measured in hertz, is actually the sampling period, uh, which is the uh, 1 over the F would give you a sampling period, so the sampling frequency then would be 1 over the period, okay? All right, so that's one uh, thing that we have to do in order to do an analog digital conversion. The second thing that we have to do in order to do an analog to signal conversion is we need to quantize. What does that mean? Quantize means this, when we check for the value here, the amplitude here at time zero, okay, we're going to assign a value to this. Then when we check here at, at, at time t equals one, let's say in this case, okay, we're going to assign a value, okay, some amplitude value to this, so on and so forth. And we can only uh, assign a finite number of values, okay, to that. So again, when you're doing analog digital conversion, you have to sample, which means check the value at a specific time, and then we have to assign a value to that, and we can only assign a finite number of values in that case. All right. Okay. Now, when it comes to uh, when it comes to sampling, we have to do this smartly. We just cannot sample uh, randomly. We have to sample at we at what's called the Nyquist rate. So the Nyquist rate states that a signal must be sampled at two times its bandwidth. Now, if the bandwidth starts at, at zero and goes to some maximum frequency, then the Nyquist rate then is two times that uh, F max, which again is the maximum frequency. So by saying that, what we're saying is, so the sampling frequency has to be greater than or equal to two times the bandwidth or two times F max if the bandwidth starts from uh, zero, okay? So that's the Nyquist rate. We cannot just sample. We have to make sure we sample uh, at twice the highest frequency or twice the bandwidth there. And the reason for that is so that we can avoid aliasing. And we'll talk about aliasing as we move along later. All right, so do we have just a couple more concepts here to get in? So we have well, symmetric signals and anti-symmetric signals. So what is a symmetric signal? So right here we have a symmetric signal. And what this means is that if we look on both sides of the zero line here, we will get the exact same values when we have S of T is equal to S of minus T. Okay, so if we put the value 5 in for T, so at S of 5, that should be equal to S of minus 5, and you can see that within this diagram here, okay? Anti-symmetric signal is actually S of T is equal to negative S of minus T, okay? And so it's, it's, it's anti-symmetric. All right, so that was an introduction to signals uh, part one. Please check for...
part two.